This is a Nexus special, episode 47, Apple September event, on September 7th, 2016. And now, I work, you work, we all work with iWork. This Nexus special is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ian R. Buck. Alrighty, so Apple's September event. Lots of stuff announced. Woohoo! Of course, Indeed. we were all excited for the iPhone, uh, yes. but they did have a few surprises for us that I don't think anybody saw coming. Uh, most of the stuff for the iPhone 7 was stuff that people had, you know, had been leaked and people had talked about. Yeah. But uh, but we still have new stuff. So yeah. That's good. So, Indeed. Uh, to kind of begin this, uh, their keynote was today at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Mm-hmm. Um, we were recording this six hours about after after it started so something like that pretty yep. f- pretty fresh mm-hmm. um i watched it live who who else did here i did i did too this was the first one that i managed to watch live because in the past they have not supported windows yeah well that's right yeah i actually had two live blogs open simultaneously but i was unfortunately um bobbing across town all afternoon <laughs> uh so i i was not able to actually catch the stream live mm. um but the Ars Technica live blog, as always, was fabulous. Yeah, uh, live blogs. So I that's how I stuff. that's how I got through the events in high school, just watching them during, during yeah. class. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have actually thrown up like keynote events. Like I think when Google was announcing the new Nexuses last year, I put that up on the projector in my classroom. While nice. class is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did people watch it? No, nobody was interested except for me. No, uh, it was sad. Well, you you tried. Maybe someday someone will be interested. So right off the uh, right out the gate, they started with a surprise. They brought uh, Nintendo on stage. It's a me, a Mario. To talk about Mario, wow. Oh no. Yeah, so they're they're coming out with a Super Mario Brothers title on Super, at least on iOS. Super Mario Brothers Run. Yep. So it is Indeed. just it looked not too different than most in and like infinite runners or endless runners that you would see but it's first party mario so it's going to be really popular yeah i know i know i mean it's it's kind of like the the go-to classic so i think it Mm -hmm. making it on ios is kind of like you apple has really made it because Mm -hmm. uh, nintendo has been known to be a very big holdout for not embracing the new modern smartphone era yeah Mm -hmm. specifically anything that nintendo doesn't make they're not going to put stuff on right right yeah uh, so uh, like this is what the third app that they're coming out with on mobile devices because we had Mitomo and then um, their pokedex I mean, didn't th- didn't oh maybe it. yeah i think that was number one i'm going to loosely count pokemon go as being a nintendo game because they kind of they i mean they own they didn't that. make it they no, have but they well, own that right property they own the they, ip yeah they partially own nintendo or pokemon company i think something like, like that third in that yeah yeah mm-hmm um, yeah, so very simple controls. It looks like you just tap to make Mario jump, and you you tap and hold to make Mario jump higher. Yeah, and he runs. And there's some social things. And interestingly, they said um, it will be a an upfront payment, so you're not um, hit with Micro- paywalls, microtransactions. And However, there's uh, interesting interestingly enough an App Store page for it already. With instead of the the get or buy button, there's a notify button. Oh but yeah. On the bottom, it says this app offers in-app purchases. So I think Nintendo said something about um, some other integrations that maybe, you know, they, they weren't going to charge, but maybe some other integrations in the app were. I'm not quite sure. That might have been tied to the pi- private policy. I don't know. That's strange. Right now, it's listed as having in-app purchases, but okay. we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not. Yeah, I not. was also a little bit confused by that, for sure. I thought that... Yeah, it, based on the way that they described it in the keynote, I thought that there wouldn't be in-app purchases, but I think you're right. It might just be that it's not like a, a Clash of Clans sort of thing. Yeah, there's there's probably some... I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, some like upgrades or costumes or something you could probably get, but hopefully not like core gameplay. Like You need to buy coins so you don't have to wait three days to do something. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, right? Time, right exactly. Time-based stuff would be awful. Yeah. Indeed. Um, then they followed up with some productivity stuff. So they talked about iWork for a little while and how they now have real time collaboration. It looked it looked like it worked. I don't know. I'll be yeah. honest. I was like reading Twitter while they did this section. Yeah. So I don't know. I oh, use see, I use yeah, iWork. Actually... But go on, Brian, Brendan. Yeah. See, I was actually really excited about that. Um, 
I use iWork extensively at work. Um, Go figure. You you work with iWork? I do work with iWork. Do you work? I, I work. Know. You work. Do I work? Everybody works. Everybody works. Um, yeah, but it, it's going to be really. Uh, it seems like this is this is really iWork as like iWork.com, the the platform yeah. itself kind of coming into sort of maturity, mm -hmm. wherein we don't have to like. Um, share keynote files around over email for example yeah. it's it's fine but it's really not fine it's going to be nice to have that sort of um, one step closer to shall we say feature parity with google drive uh, and google docs and google slides and google sheets but um, it, it kind of blows the annoying... my mind that like yeah. it i mean google docs started what when we were in high school so 2008 2009 2010 something like that and it's like and to this day they still haven't figured out copy and paste who haven't? Didn't. Oh, you're so, oh, you're right when you're not in Chrome. All right. I live in the Chrome world, so I never encounter that problem. Uh, so when you're using like Firefox or whatever, and you're not like, like, uh, and, you, and you're not, you haven't used this computer a whole lot, I think Google Docs won't let you use the keyboard shortcuts for copy and pasting. It's super weird. Interesting. Because I know, like, at least in Safari, I'll, like, right-click, hit paste, and it says, you have to use the keyboard shortcut, so then I hit oh, paste. Oh, yeah. Or it was the other way around, yeah. But um, I know with, at least when I copy, when, I, when I'm when i on my Mac, when TweetBot for Mac, I'll do copy link to tweet, and it'll paste, and it won't paste anything. I'll have to um, do the keyboard shortcut, the, what is it, shift option command V to paste without formatting, and then it'll oh, load in. Oh, that's super weird. That might just be a tweetbot thing though that it copies some media with it as well but oh possibly i don't know yeah, yeah. I don't but know. i think the real-time collaboration is um a good thing for apple to do i've i don't know many people who use iwork i think i'm kind of at the point where i, I don't you know i'm done with school so i'm probably mm -hmm. not going to be using document suites very much anymore but uh since the u of m has pulled my license for <laughs> yeah Microsoft Office, I will now really only be using iWork or Google Docs. Mm -hmm. I know that, um, yeah, Keynote is one of the kind of core apps that SPPS loads on all of the students' iPads. Um, I don't really know how much other teachers encourage the students to use Keynote, uh, but I always, I always have them using like the Google products because that's something that they're going to be able to use both on the desktops that I have in the classroom and their iPad. Yeah, that's you know. true. Though Keynote is really, really nice. Yeah. I've always really, really loved Keynote. All right, well, that's iWork. <laughs> so next, uh, Apple talked about the new Apple Watch. This was when they started bringing out like the big stuff that they wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so they are calling this new one Series 2. Um, now, they are going back and calling the, the first generation Series 1. I think the price changed a little. Series 2 is a little more expensive than Series 1 was when it first came out. And Series 1 is a little more is a little cheaper now than it was before today, I think. I don't have the prices in front of me. It was yes, kind of, indeed. I tried to Sorry. go and look at the, the listing on Apple's website for the original Apple Watch. And it's it and it gave me like a little splash screen saying, "Hey, we've got great things coming your way. Just sit tight." And I'm like, "What? I know. They I'm watching that? the presentation oh, right now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they they always have the store closed during mm. their presentations. Mm -hmm. So yes, indeed. This new Apple Watch. Uh, there are several new features, including uh, they're still water resistant, but not just one meter. It's to 50 meters 50 meters so this waterproof standard it's the ip67 so it's uh more mm, i think ip67 was what they talked about for that, iphone the iphone yep sorry i don't remember the name of it then for apple watch but it's up to 50 meters i was reading online that i don't think it's actually 50 meters but it's rated for good enough for swimming because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 50 meters is kind of like brand new not worn too much but oh yeah, yeah i don't know but so now they they added a indoor and outdoor swimming feature to the workout app on the apple watch so uh it's intended for people who are swimming to track the swimming which i think is really kind of the next step because swimming's a very active workout mm -hmm. and if you're wearing a first generation apple watch you're risking it a little bit by <laughs> using it also the other wouldn't workout, that mess up like your aerodynamics just a little, a little bit or hydrodynamics 
It can, it can depend. It can depend on how much you care about that. Okay. <laughs> and it'll it'll make you work even harder. So which is, <laughs> and, but it, it's rounded, so it, the water will just totally flow oh, over. Oh, yeah, totally. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Indeed. So I was actually, I wasn't expecting it uh, to be that good because up until now, like the kind of the gold standard of water resistance for smartwatches has been the Pebble, which is resistant up to 30 meters. And nobody else has come close to that. Yeah. So Apple making the claim that they've got 50 meters, that's like, that's saying something. I'm, I'm curious if it's their aluminum body that's adding a little more strength. Because oh. I, I, would, I would assume the plastic would flex just a tiny bit. So in addition to all of this new waterproofness that allows you to swim with your Apple Watch, there's also a redesign in the speaker. So a uh, big issue with waterproof devices and speakers is that a speaker needs air to move for sound to be made. So when there's water in the speaker, it's not going to work very well and could damage it or something if it, I don't know, works too hard or something. I don't know. Yeah. So they redesigned the speaker. So it's kind of less deep inside the watch and closer to the edge. Mm -hmm. And it will uh, eject water. So it plays some frequency, I guess, that is good for water resonation or something so the water kind of jumps out and <laughs> i'm surprised they didn't have a clever name for that they have a clever name for everything else it said they the just water said water atomizes <laughs> and immediately exits the watch <laughs> now I, I wonder if this is like a little a vibrant little spray of water or if it's just like you, will, ju yeah, you just hear you go burr, and you just see like a drop of water coming Sound out like of the that. side of your mouth uh and that's watch. i think that's one thing that pebble didn't have to worry about at all because they don't have a speaker on this watch at yeah. all yeah mm -hmm. It's just the vibrator. So that'll be, think, that'll be interesting to see. I think the way that Apple does it is they play Drake's Hotline Bling. And <laughs> all of the water molecules are just like, oh man, I'm so sick of this song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Peace. Oh man. Uh, Definitely. So, so, so indeed. Uh, in addition, while, while we're mentioning Drake, uh, there's, there's only one other part of the watch that is, shall we say, as vibrant uh, as everyone's favorite R&B singer, and that is uh, the new display, which is bright to not one, not 10, not 100, but 1,000 nits, which they explained with a explainer video, a la Vox, um, <laughs> describing what uh, what a nit is um, for, for, for oh, really? many people do not know. Yes. Oh, yes. That was, that was quite cool. Did, wait, did they have that in the keynote? Cause I oh, no. I, yeah, maybe I did that not was see in it, something know. else. Okay, that was was it in their uh, tweet maybe... where they had 107 seconds of recap. Oh, okay. very good recap yeah. on Twitter, by the way. That that was I really did adore that recap. We'll we'll make sure that it gets in the show notes one way or another. Um, but I I thought that was I I thought I had saw that on the live stream when I caught the tail end of the live stream. But um, you're right, it was probably just in that video. So I got to say, I have not heard anybody mention nits since one of the Chromebook Pixels came out, and they were like, it's so bright! And, yeah, nobody nobody talks about that, that so spec. So when this was introduced, they said it has a thousand nits. That's a lot of nits. That's a lot of nits. <laughs> and they moved on, <laughs> and people were quoting it on Twitter. Yep. Indeed, indeed. Um, but that, that'll be pretty cool. I, I didn't necessarily catch the comparison to the existing watch, but that, that definitely sounds like a larger number. Mm -hmm. um, not that I've had any complaints, really, with the dis brightness on the display of my watch, but that's usually because I like every display I have to be set to the lowest possible backlight setting. Mm, even when you're outside? Because that's, that's the usage case that they were citing, of course. This is true, even when I'm outside. I think my watch is set to the middle tier, and I find mm -hmm. it's just fine. Like, inside, yeah. I think, and it will get dimmer, too, if it's, you know, if it is dim. But For sure. I find it's it's plenty. I mean, I guess when it's brighter, it, it looks a little less of image on a screen and more like it's just there because it pops so much. Mm. Right. Especially with the contrast of the OLED display. But I have the opposite problem with my watch. I can't see mm -hmm. it in the dark <laughs> <laughs> until I turn on the backlight. Uh, of course, they made the Apple Watch Series 2 just a little bit faster processor-wise. They've got... Double a... the cores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got 50% faster uh, CPU. And so it's a dual core now and mm -hmm. uh, a twice as fast GPU. Um, but the real thing that we're all talking about is that GPS. Oh, yeah. It's Absolutely. got a GPS in it now. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of um, they're positioning this now as like the perfect thing for runners uh, to take with them because, 
you know, you can you can have it record your run. You don't need to take your your phone with you at all. Um, you can you, we've been able to store music on, on it, right? For like the yep. series one yep. can already you can do store that. a playlist. Yeah. So yes, indeed. So you'll have your music with you already. Um, boom. What more do you need on a run? That's pretty much it. Well, I suppose you're going to need your Bluetooth headphones, but you know those are sold separately. <laughs> we'll come to that later. Yeah. Right, right. And like I, I have to admit too, like this is probably the one thing, the single most important thing that I would probably um, use, like the, the single largest rationale that I might use to actually get a Series 2. I don't think I'm going to. Mm. But if I were to do, I think that would be the, the, the kicker, the thing that really gets me there. Because um, I don't usually run with my, well, when I run, I'm always wearing my watch, but I don't, like, running is not necessarily the thing that I want to track very much because I kind of am awful at running. <laughs> um, but the thing that I do want to track more frequently is biking because I use biking as, as a uh, mode of transport. Yeah. Uh, shameless plug for the, um, for, for our next show uh, on, on transportation, particularly relating to car ownership, um, where I also won't mention bikes, but that's a different story. Um <laughs> But, uh, like, the GPS is something that I miss a ton when I'm biking. Um, however, anything else, like, because my watch can track heart rate and stuff, usually it gets the the amount of, like, motion that I do just fine. And in that sense, I've actually kind of trained myself not to care as much about GPS, but when I'm biking, oh, man, uh, that would be the kicker for me. Also, it comes with watchOS 3, which, um, if, if, which will also be available to Series 1 watches. Um, regardless, I would say that's a thing that you definitely are going to want to uh, upgrade to if you have the option. Yeah, so you guys have been using the beta for a little while, right? I um, have not on my watch. Okay. I've been on two. Stuff. Brandon, have you? I have. I've been on the beta since it launched. I actually w watched the keynote in a conference in our conference room at the office last time. Okay. Uh, the the uh, WWDC keynote that is. So can, and, you, can you give us like a quick rundown of what's new in WatchOS three? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of kind of finesses, really, um, on the original and, and second watchOS. So the a couple of the most prominent things that are missing are complications. No, not complications. Complications are improved, but it's definitely still present. Uh, glances are what's gone in watchOS 3. So uh, on the Apple Watch, you can swipe up from the, from the watch face, and you'll have all these different kind of screens that you can do different things with, like, one is like music controls, another is like stocks and weather, and um, another that's kind of like control center kind of. Now when you swipe up from the, from the um, watch face uh, in watchOS 3, you'll actually just get what I'll call like a control center view, like you would on uh, any other iOS device. It kind of brings it together a little more, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Con consistency is great. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've... You also... Mm -hmm. And I want to say WatchOS 3 has less emphasis on force touch for extra options. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. Many more things are kind of on the first layer, um, which, which is really helpful, particularly in that controls interview, but also throughout any other apps you might use. Um, another thing that's kind of interesting is they removed um, time travel. So on previous versions of WatchOS, you could use the digital crown to kind of go forward and backward in time if you're on the watch face. Yeah. Uh, so that would do things like if you had a calendar complication on your watch face, you could um, scroll forward with the digital crown to see what was coming up next. And I actually really like that because I, I have a, a couple serious beefs with the calendar complications they currently uh, are. As somebody who has a bunch of meetings that are often like um, within 15 minutes of each other, it ne almost yeah. never <laughs> will start to like the meeting that I actually want it to go to. Uh, it'll always stay on the meeting that I was previously on or a different meeting that I'm not attending. Um, and I'm, I'm just not a fan of that. So I really did like time travel for that. So that, that, that was new in WatchOS 2, but it's removed now, you're saying? That is my understanding. Huh. That or for some reason my digital crown is messed up and it's not, uh, it's not working. Last I checked, it did seem like it was officially removed. Okay. Um, that would, I mean, I, I don't use it very much. I guess my only, currently I don't have many events, so I would mostly use it for weather, but at that point I might as well just open the weather app and yeah, like, Carrot Weather as much as but Shameless plug for Carrot Weather. It's the best in the world. You should totally it use really it. It really is. It truly is. Uh, that's been that's been a uh, especially helpful this past week where we've had r rain in the Twin Cities. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
A uh, couple other things about watchOS 3, um, in addition to kind of like the, the decreased reliance on force touch, um, there's a couple of new watch faces that allow, that kind of pull in some of the more popular complications, I feel. Um, one of which is the activity analog face, which I'm partial to. So it's kind of like one of those, um, uh, one of those watches that has multiple dials, you know, uh, the one that I have right now, I'll put a screenshot in the show notes. Um, what, what you can do is uh, you can set it so that, well, the main watch face tells the time. There are three smaller watch faces uh, inscribed in that uh, larger watch face that show your um, your move score, your exercise score, and your um, number of hours through which you've been standing for one minute or longer. Um, so your three activity dials basically within it. Yeah. And I adore that. It's like so, so useful to me. Um, and then I can use the other complications for other things like starting a workout, uh, kicking open Strava if I want to track a ride, a bike ride, stuff like that. So um, the, also they had a, a new complication for now playing, which I really like. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so that kind of replaces, in my estimation at least, that replaces the uh, the uh, glance for music control. Yeah, and I think I want to say it's a lot easier to switch faces now. So they almost have it where you can kind of switch faces rather than load up a complication. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. So you can actually just switch switch faces by from the main watch face, swiping left or right to any mm. other watch face that you have set up. And that is really helpful. So I guess like if it's towards the end of the day, I'm like, crap, I need to fill up my activity rings. I better go to that that view so I can, or that face so I can be constantly reminded. Yep. Or in my case, uh, for example, like if, if it's almost the end of the day and I'm done with classes or done with work, I can just swipe over and be like, oh, the only thing I have left is act to fill up my activity rings. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes, indeed. I think that's a pretty... Um, oh, no. There's there's one other thing about watchOS 3 that I really appreciate. Um, so in watchOS 2, they introduced some features where your watch continues to work kind of without your phone by seemingly piggybacking off of Wi-Fi networks in the area that you've oh. been authenticated to. Yeah. And that has been uh, drastically improved, I feel, uh, in watchOS 3. So, for example, there was one time when I was um, I was walking down to the grocery store near me. Um, it's a Lunds and Byerleys, uh, as, as I've mentioned extensively on Twitter, or as 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 real as real Lunds and Byerleys fans call it, Byerleys. Um, <laughs> Unless you're from the other side of the river, I definitely call it Lunds <laughs> all the time. Just, just saying. Is that a thing? I thought Byerloose is a St. Paul. You guys should be my people on this. Dude, I don't know, Byerloose actually. Paul side. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have a Ted on grocery stores. All I know is that Rainbow got bought by Cub, and everything is weird now. Because there's a Rainbow <laughs> and a Cub in Midway. Though I think Rainbow's <laughs> coming be... down for the soccer stadium. So. Oh, man. Hmm. Big yeah, changes. Everything about, that is very, everything about that is very confusing. We should definitely have a Ted on the Twin Cities grocery <laughs> scene because it's very interesting okay. to me. Local references um, aside... Anyhow, yes. Yeah, so I so I was I was at the grocery store, and uh, I left my phone at home, you know, because uh, <laughs> because because it was dead, um, and I, I needed to let it charge. So I'm oh, over yeah. at I'm over at the grocery store, and all of a sudden I realize I'm getting text messages, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what is going on? My phone is at home. Did you do this like the home. Tim Allen grunt? Uh, yeah, that one exactly. You bet. Um, I, I kind of did do the Tim Allen grunt actually, and people were were staring. It was strange. Um, but uh, it turns out it was because in WatchOS three, it'll actually deliver text messages if it can find a known Wi-Fi network. Um, there's there's also some other things you can do, like respond to text messages, which, if I recall correctly, was not in WatchOS two uh, to respond mm. to text messages over Wi-Fi. But oh, Brian, you might be able to correct me on that. I've, I mean, you've been able to reply to text messages since WatchOS one. I, yeah, I'm not too frequently without my phone while in Wi-Fi because, well, when my phone dies. But I don't. I'll be honest. I don't use my watch for that much more than checking the weather, uh, seeing notifications that come in, and mm -hmm. um, um, activity. On. Did you? Ju okay, so you said that your phone was dead, mm -hmm. and you were replying to text messages. Hi messages. Okay, that make okay. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> that would probably uh, work with text messages, even if you weren't connected to your phone over Bluetooth, because I know with iCloud you can do text message forwarding. So if you're mm -hmm. on your Mac and your phone's somewhere else, 
Right, but can, like doesn't but like your phone still has to be connected to your carrier for any of your devices yeah. to get an SMS. And but, in that case, it would have been on and connected to, to the carrier. It just would have been way out of uh, way, way out of Bluetooth lane. Right, 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 right. So just going hopping yeah. over the internet versus right. Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, if your phone is dead, there's not there's nothing you can do about us. Kind of SOL. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is true. This is true. One other thing I, I forgot to mention about WatchOS three is you can now respond to text messages with Scribble. Uh, oh yeah, Scribble. Which which is like my number one favorite feature of WatchOS three. Oh really. Um, cool. Yeah, because I, I use that all the darn Because the time. voice voice dictation is really, really slow to get queued up, I find. Is Scribble right. also slow? I would assume Scribble seems bit. much quicker. Okay. Scribble seems much quicker and much more accurate. So I can write out an entire word, for, for example, and by the time I finished writing out the word, uh, Scribble will sort it out. Uh, Scribble will be done. Uh, I'm sure that it'll be better on the on the series two, and it'll be better perhaps uh, in the GM build of WatchOS three. But um, it it's been so reliable now that I don't even dictate anymore because talking to my watch kind of looks weird. Um, <laughs> I used it when I drove, and I would be like, "Call someone's mm. name," and that'd be great because then I could just kind of hold my watch, like just you know, it, it would it would be in between my eyes and the road. And the steering wheel is in front of me, so yeah. I just kind of like hold down the button. I definitely only do voice dictation when I'm by myself, nobody else around. Yep. More or less, that's me too. Yeah. Um, they also I, talked about. Sorry, was there one? Anything else? No, I was just gonna do the same segue you were. Oh, nice. Do, okay. So, so yeah, segue that segue. They they also brought on a couple more partners to talk about some stuff. Um, Nike was on for quite a while talking about a specific like Nike branded version of the, the Apple, Apple Watch, Watch Nike Plus. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think we should spend much time talking about that. There it's was... got its own unique band. It's got, it has its own section. So if you go to apple.com slash watch, there's Apple Watch Series 2, Apple Watch Nike Plus, Apple Watch Hermes, Apple Watch Edition, Apple mm-hmm. Watch Series 1. So. Indeed. Yeah. So now we're, yeah. we're up to a lot of different combinations that you can do for one watch. You know, there, there are a lot Indeed. of different ways to have an Apple Watch. Um, so the latest ways to have an Apple Watch are coming soon. We'll be able to pre-order them on September 9th, and they will become available on September 16th. Anyone here going to buy one? I won't. Uh, if somebody wants to buy me the ceramic edition, they oh. are definitely more that than white. welcome to. That white. Oh, my God. It looks great. I don't, yeah, think, I, I looks... don't think I even need to answer that I'm question. Just, <laughs> I'm just a little hesitant about it because it, you'd think it would be so brittle. Like, you would, it would just scratch at nothing. I don't know. Uh, I mean, oh, what kind of, no, I don't no know way. what kind of coating it has. The Nexus 5 had ceramic buttons on it, and those didn't – they never okay. got scratches on them but at like, all. But, it, like, it's, like, shattery, doesn't – you know, like, you drop a plate, it kind of – It's I, There's a lot of different stuff you can do with ceramics. Yeah. That, and yeah. there's probably a hard coating on the outside because it's shiny and looks like a good finish. Indeed, indeed. It just looks so darn awesome. I definitely would like it if it weren't totally impractical. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's about that. It's um, only twelve hundred and fifty dollars, guys. Oh yeah, my god. Uh, okay. I, that's I like prefer... that's like half a MacBook Pro of the exactly. one that you would want to buy. I would definitely prefer a new MacBook Pro to that. I kind of wish they would have announced new MacBook Pros instead of a new ceramic Apple Watch <laughs> that I won't buy. Um, uh, October, we'll I hope. It exists. I hope yeah, October. Right. You want to know something that's free though? What? Pokemon Go is coming to the Apple Watch. So, what? yeah, they cool. this is the second time that a Nintendo related <laughs> thing came on stage. Uh so they talked about some of the Apple Watch specific stuff um that you'll be able to do without taking out your phone. Um so I I believe the way this works is if you want the Apple Watch to have Pokemon Go stuff popping up on it, you have to specifically tell it like I'm about to go for a walk. And so then it mm-hmm. starts, you know, like figuring out stuff on your on your phone, I think, because it needs that data connection, right? Um, yep. So there are several events in the game that you can see on the watch directly. Um, when Pokemon appear, you'll be able to see that. Um, when when you walk next to a Pokestop, you'll be, it'll pop up. Um, and when, egg hatch, when eggs hatch, you'll be able to see that. Um, for Pokemon appearing, you obviously have to take out your phone to actually, like, throw Pokeballs at it. Um, but for like Pokestops, simple things like that, you can just collect the items without taking out your phone. So that's pretty nifty. Um, and I, I mean, I really, really want that kind of, obviously on my Pebble, I won't be able to get nearly that much feature, but like Pokemon Go's gotta come out with a background play version. There's nothing stopping you from buying an iPhone and an Apple Watch. There is. (laughs) Myself. Aww. 
Well, you know, it's, it's worth a shot too. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of interesting though, because uh, somebody tried to convince me that Pokemon Go had this had these features like six weeks ago when Pokemon Go originally came out. They're like, "Oh yeah, if you've got an Apple Watch, you can do all this stuff." And I was like, "No, you can't." No. I've been playing Pokemon Go for like forty eight hours, and uh, that that has not happened to me. So it's really interesting that they went to this level of interactivity now. Um, seems pretty smart for keeping it keeping it going. But then again, yeah, going, <laughs> yeah, keep it Pokemon going. Um, but like the other thing is like there aren't the population of Apple Watch users is not significantly um, so large that it alone will like this this advancement might might generate some slight bump in momentum among like people who have Apple Watches which uh, not not kidding ourselves that's a that's a pretty particular demographic psychographic and like uh, like like uh, socioeconomic profile. And, well, and, and you got to consider that, like, since they make all their money off of microtransactions in that game, what group of people is going to be more likely to be willing to put in some microtransactions? I'd say that right. people with Apple Watches are, are going to fit into that group more often. I see. I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I, but I, th- I, th- I think you're right that there's definitely um, that the disposable income might be there. But I don't think that the willingness to partake in microtransactions might necessarily be there, particularly related to like iOS games. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, how, how that plays out. All right. Do we want to move on to the big event of the day? Hold yes, on. I got, I got one more thing about. So Apple Watch oh. Series One yeah. is still around. They're still going to sell that a little cheaper. It has the dual core CPU that the Apple Watch Two has. So this, I think, is Apple's way of saying, "All right, Apple Watch One was a little slow. Let's speed it up a little bit and keep it cheap." So even if you buy the non Series Two version, you still get better performance so wait so they're going to have they're going to have two different thing like things that are called the apple watch series one apple watch series one is series one the original so there's the the apple watch and then there's apple watch series one apple watch series two apple watch series one is the same as the original but with the addition of the dual core cpu okay oh really oh i did not notice that hmm only they were they are not selling the the Apple Watch anymore. The they will only original. be selling Series One and Series Two. Okay. Okay. Who boy. Um. All right. Yeah. That, there's no way that that naming naming scheme would stick around. The Apple Watch Watch, Apple Watch Sport, Apple Watch Edition, Sport Edition, Edition Edition, Watch Edition. <laughs> all right. So yeah. the iPhone Seven. A little bit easier to understand all the different versions of this one. Um. So they started off, of course, talking about the design because that's like the big the big appeal of an iPhone. Um, and right off the bat, they they told us about this new finish that they had come up with. Uh, they had a really sexy video of Jet the black. polish, the polishing uh, process that they put these things through. Um, yeah, the new color is jet black. Jet black. And so that is exactly the one I'm going to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's, it's still aluminum. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... I think nine layers in some way or another of anodized aluminum or nine processes. So, you know, they polish it, they buff it, they do all that stuff. And you come out with this very, very dark black that's very shiny. Uh, yep. I think now they did release on their specs page saying, quote, the high gloss finish of the jet black iPhone 7 is achieved through a precision nine step anodization and polishing process. Its surface is equally as hard as other anodized Apple products. However, its high shine may be show or may show fine micro abrasions with use. If you are concerned about this, we suggest you use one of the many cases available to protect your iPhone, end quote. <laughs> so that being said, I'm not sure if I really want it or not. I think I coming think... from the iPhone 5, the black version, the the little buffed, I don't know what, the I don't know, the, there's the metal on the bezel and there's a little mm-hmm. angle that was mm. buffed smooth and that, showed scratches very very easily right the chamfered edge yeah yeah that's what that that's the name chamfered edge yes indeed so i'm not quite sure i think i would like to see it in person but that's clearly not going to happen because i'm going to pre-order that my iphone 7 (laughs) on friday (laughs) but i could be convinced if someone wants to persuade me (laughs) i i don't think there's i don't think there's any logical way that i can persuade you that this is uh that, that this is going to be all right like that that it's that it's going to not get scratched it totally will get scratched yeah i am absolutely going to buy one anyway <laughs> i i would uh, feel and... like it would make the the transition from edge to edge 
even better because black glass is a lot more similar mm-hmm. to shiny uh, black yeah, aluminum yeah. rather than a matte finish. Right. Mm-hmm. I would go with the matte black one just because that's more my aesthetic. Um, but that's me. Right, right. I have to say, like, it, it's gonna it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb thumb among my like white Apple Watch with a red band, <laughs> white iPad with a red case. Oh yeah. Uh, and silver MacBook. But um. But I mean, you can you can I'm always just case it no matter what. I'm thinking colors. of buying so either the black or the jet black iPhone Seven, and then one of the leather cases. But which mm. color? Yep. Well, here's the thing uh, though: black is gonna look good under anything. Yeah. Right. This is true. So. Um, so but, we'll anyhow, black. some other. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I meant both true. of the black yeah, ones, yeah. yeah. This is true. But anyhow, there's some other kind of cool aspects about this phone, too. Uh, in addition to its neat finish, uh, it's also uh, rated to IP67. Uh, water resistance and uh, dust resistance is also called out here, too. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that that's the same standard that the first-generation Apple Watch is also at IP67. Yeah, so that I means that so. it's good for it's good for essentially, like, one meter uh, of... of uh, of splash proofishness, I guess, shall we say, uh, but it's not uh, ready for your scuba trip. Maybe I really want one. someone to ask Tim Cook if he showers with his iPhone Seven because <laughs> he does with his Apple Watch. I'm pretty sure that uh, IP67 is is pretty much the highest rating that any phone manufacturer goes for. Yeah, so, oh, for sure. Yeah, it'll it'll protect against the whoops. I walked into my pool. They had an image during the keynote mm-hmm. of someone falling into their pool with the phone held above. Them. Oh yeah, yeah. And, you know, like. Walk into a pool or dropping in the toilet, or it should protect against all of that. All of those things that we've been seeing in Samsung commercials for the last year, uh, mm-hmm. those are all possible with but the didn't, iPhone didn't 7. Didn't Samsung have waterproof phone and they didn't and they brought it back? Is that is You know, something? I don't pay that much attention to Samsung because I don't like their, yeah. their yeah. stuff. Hey, um, we're all, and then, uh, we're all there. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Then, then all the batteries in those waterproof phones exploded because they were sealed in too tight. Yeah. Womp, womp. Oh, wow. Well, the, nah. didn't Samsung just do a recall on the Note Seven? Uh, they Note did. 7? I'm, I'm, I'm just being obnoxious. <laughs> but that, that's not actually the reason why. But just love to, love to stir the pot so, on Samsung. <laughs> yeah. So I will. Then the next kind of feature they they touted was the haptic feedback home button. So this is no. Mm-hmm. The button is no longer a physical thing. You, it's you know another kind of 3D or force touch, with their new haptic engine. And they are mm-hmm. releasing a Force Touch or Taptic API um, inside of, I don't know, you mm-hmm. like it? Found it what? So I'm wondering Coco. how much you're going to feel that Taptic feedback when you're doing things that aren't on the home button. You know, when you're when you're holding the phone and your thumb isn't right there on the home button, like, how well, much I, are you going to feel that? I think that? The, the, the feedback goes throughout the whole phone. I, don't, okay. I think it's just a, a glorified vibrating thing. Because, like, okay. on the Apple Watch, the Taptic engine is pretty good. It You, you definitely feel it. And I think it's kind of similar to the MacBooks as well. That one's clearly mm-hmm. a lot larger because it has more space on the right. trackpad. But I th- I saw a tweet of someone saying it felt really fake, and I saw another tweet of someone saying it was awesome. So time will tell how good it is. But the camera, how Ooh, wow, the that, camera. I think every year Apple's like, this is the best camera ever. And then every year they one-up themselves yet again. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, editing is something that they were talking a lot about here in this one, like the the automatic processing that the yeah, phone a goes new through. Processor, I don't remember what it was IPS? called. IPS? No, I ISP. That's what it was. Internet Service Provider. Right. Was it? Uh, image signal processing. So, that uh, something was like that, usually maybe. related to video, I believe, but I could be wrong. Uh, There's a thing on the in the in a chip somewhere on that board that does yeah. some stuff with the photos and whatnot. Nice. Makes them look good. Yeah, makes them go. So. Now, across both the 7 and 7 Plus model, there is still the 12 megapixel camera. Mm-hmm. They're going down to a f1.8 aperture. I think it's down from a 2. So, nice. even wider, what, what you would call it's, it. It's, it's a larger aperture. Yeah, that. Yep. Yeah. Wider aperture. Digital zoom still up to 5x. Now, in all models, there's optical image stabilization, which should help a lot for everything, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Low light, um, movement, whatnot. Um, it's now up to a 6 element, element lens. I don't remember if the 6s has a six or five element, but I think the six has a five. What, element. what does that even tell us? Like, because we do we even another, know what the elements there's are? There's another glass piece of glass or plastic in the lens. I think. Oh, okay. I think it's like the layers of okay. lenses. Yep, this uh, is correct. There is a quad LED True Tone flash, so this is upping from their two LED True Tone flash that was in a five S through the six S. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think this allows for trying to combat light flickers from fluorescent lighting i think there's a mention oh, yeah. of some flickering 
I oh, wait, they have an extra more... sensor like right there to, for, yeah. specifically for sensing the flickering. Yeah. So this should help to combat that even more. Uh, there's stabilization in live photos, as you'd expect with optimal Im- optical image stabilization. Mm-hmm. Um, it now captures photos in a wider color gamut, so the P3 standard. That and they can been... display it yes. in a wider gamut the, as well. The display is Retina HD, which is what they've been calling all of their uh, wide color gamut displays. So it's a good camera to buy if you're looking for high quality 10 bit color. I was I was really interested to see them mention raw photos up there. Now we're not sure if this was like actually it can take raw photos or if there's like an API for this sort of thing or you know if it, but I'm excited that it was you know that it was at least mentioned so probably yeah and yeah. They, they did mention that Adobe Lightroom is coming to iOS. Right. Oh man. I am at very least some sort of it. So I think I think photography is even coming more and more. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Now, the iPhone 7 Plus has something a little extra. Yes. Indeed, the second camera. Mm-hmm. And I got, I got really confused when we were seeing, like, some of the, 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 like, the, the first video that they showed us during the keynote. Because yeah. I was seeing, like, And even okay, all the leaks before this. Yeah. I was, like, I saw some of the images that had two cameras and one, some of them that had one camera. And I'm, like, what's going on? Which one is it? Oh, it's both. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the iPhone 7 Plus has two cameras. One of them is a wide angle, the the regular one, and then uh, the other one is a little bit more zoomed in. Um, so it's at 2x. Um, so you can. I think it's a 56 millimeter equivalent. Okay, right, yeah. That telephoto lens. Yeah. Um, so you can zoom all the way to 2x without using digital zoom. You're just using optical zoom for that. Um, right. And then because of that. Uh, they've increased what you're allowed to digital zoom from 5x to 10x on the iPhone 7 Plus because then, you know, the resolution will still be the same as if you were digital zooming on 5x for the regular. I want to know, how are they zooming at less than two times? Because... Yeah, right, when you're in between one and two. I would imagine it's kind of like a weird morphing. It's not quite... It's not going to be pixel-pixel... Exactly yeah. what the, the sensor would see. Like, do they take one picture with both of them and then w- put them together kind of thing? I would assume so, but they're not exactly the same place. There's a tiny difference, right. so right. it's going to be a little different, especially if it's close up. So I, I'm not sure what to think of that. But And they're able to take advantage of that um, that difference. Of, yeah, yes. Uh, for, what was it, for the depth of field, right? Yeah, yeah. so this yeah. is a new, a new software feature that they can apply to a photo to mm-hmm. simulate a depth of field. So they'll, they're using machine learning and other cool algorithms to detect people and the subject of your photo, and then it will blur the background. Yep. So I think HTC had something like this a few years ago. Yeah, two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so after HTC came out with this depth of field thing with two cameras, a bunch of other, like, camera apps tried to emulate that with weird ways of like okay so we've only got one camera to work with but if you take it and you like rotate around the subject then we can get some depth information about the objects in there and then it'll blur it and it was like oh it's the worst yeah because when you have two cameras you can just cycle between the two to Mm -hmm. find the difference because things that are far away are going to shift a lot less than up front so it can kind of do that to judge depth so it's a lot more of a sure way to figure out what's close and what's far mm-hmm. for your subject. Now, I saw on Twitter some example screen or example photos from this, and the the edges look a little unrealistic from what I th- thought. Um, so I think a real camera was still going to do a much better job than right this effect. Now, the front facing camera, uh, which for some people is more important than the back facing camera. Is, <laughs> is now seven megapixels uh, up from five Woo! Woo! and what was that wide color capture for photos and live photos so okay, it's yeah. got the the high color gamma as well good 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 so those snapchats are going to be even better <laughs> they're going to be fire af as the youth say fire af um indeed so all of this is kind of complemented by that um wide gamut uh retina hd display they're calling it which i'm sincerely looking forward to uh, as uh, as a 5s owner here, I can definitely uh, see, in, even in comparison to my uh, iPad Air 2, the kind of difference uh, in the kind of true to lifeness that the that the colors can display. Uh, so it's cool to see that they're finally bringing that down from the iPad Pros and the Air 2 uh, to to the 7. You know, Brandon, I think you've you've deferred the 
new phone jitters for so long, you definitely deserve all of, you know, every, every excited moment that you get this year. Aw, thanks, buddy. Yeah, no, it's, it's very much like, oh my gosh, it has this feature that has been in every other product line. Uh, for the past two and a half years, but haven't got out. I think it's only been old. on iPad Pro, though. Oh man, not again! What is going Seriously, on over what, there? So, for for context, uh, I live off of University Avenue in Minneapolis, uh-huh. which was in in the past. I think you're gonna have to say that sentence again. Whoa. I live off of University Avenue, so like that is that. So there's wow. just lots of traffic around here. Uh, let me see For those listening, we just different. saw on Brennan's feed, uh, it's about one second image of just looking out his window. We saw a bunch of parked cars and like one car slowly driving by. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the mean mean streets of Northeast Minneapolis. <laughs> just kidding. Northeast is awesome. Don't even don't even at me. I love this place. But anyhow, it should should be more stable now. Okay. Um. So now yeah. the biggest. Well, actually, no, not quite yet. Another feature, stereo speakers. So Yeah, I was not expecting to see this in an iPhone. So there had been leaked photos showing, uh, which we'll kind of get into in a minute, two speaker grills on the bottom. Mm. And then, so people thought, is that going to be two speakers or is it going to be like the first generation iPhone where one was a speaker and one was a microphone? Right. I think it's probably that because the earpiece is where the other sound comes out of. Mm-hmm. So they must have a fancy speaker in the earpiece and they just jack up the volume a little more because... You don't want it that loud. Now, on. take a look at my phone, Brian, and tell me. Those speakers on the bottom and the top of my phone, they look the same, right? Yeah, they do. The speaker grills are the same size. You'd expect it to be are stereo speakers. not at all? It's not. Huh. It's, ah, it makes me mad. It makes me so mad. Well, now on the oh. iPhone, they won't look the same, but they will, or they should kind of-ish be the same. They, they'll complement each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll be nice, because, mm-hmm. I don't know, I watch a video, and I always have to think, okay... Where are people to be less disturbed of where I face the speaker? Because <laughs> if I'm like sitting on my bed and my door's open, I'll you're turn not gonna it the have other to... way around so it doesn't go out the door as much. Yeah, you're not gonna have to carefully like cup your hand on the end of it to like direct all the sound towards yeah, yourself. Yeah, totally. yeah, totally. So that should be exciting. Though, Brian, you know there is another solution to this, yeah. and you know what that solution is? Headphones. Headphones. An, an HTC phone. Wait a minute! I oh. can't plug in my headphones into this iPhone. 7. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So, ad- admittedly, uh, I-, I bring this up half in jest and half because, um, hilariously, I'm currently using Bluetooth headphones connected via a, a mini phono cable uh, to my iPad <laughs> to-, to, uh, to do this, even though that it could handle it just fine via Bluetooth. However, uh, I don't want to use the microphone on these headphones, hence, uh, the, uh, hence the cable. Additionally, right. I don't want to add that other fun entropy of having the, uh, having the audio cut in and out either... Uh, because a Chrome tab is crashing or because uh, your Bluetooth uh, headphones are not necessarily working, which is another thing that we'll mention in just a moment. Uh, so as, as you said, um, there's no longer a 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack, mini phono jack, mm-hmm. uh, in, um, in the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, uh, which has been uh, widely reported by a bunch of different folks uh, for, I believe, almost a year now. I think Christina Warren first mentioned it on Mashable about a year ago. Yeah, it's been, it's been around for a long time, which I would have to imagine is a, is a controlled leak, so people wouldn't be freaking out about it as much right now. Right. right. Uh, I do have a little bit of a rant to go on. Go for it. Can you, can you guess what I'm going to say in this rant? What's my main point going to be? Ian's going to argue for the existence of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I'm actually not. Really? I'm going to argue for uh, the need... If we if we do You're get argue rid for of, USB-C, yes, I am. <laughs> you got me there. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm not super sad about the three and a half millimeter jack going away because like he made a really good point during the presentation that that it doesn't make any sense to have a singular port that only does one thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. Of course, the 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 kind of the other side of that is well, that's not the only thing that it does, right? It like a lot of peripherals use it to just like get a little bit of power out of the phone, right? Right. So, so oh, where Square uses it to do you the, can uh, you exactly. can hack a analog signal to do a lot for you, especially with the right. the, the TRRS version with the the buttons or the microphone. Oh right? sure, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, um. So yeah. So now, so now, like, if you want to have a credit card reader for your phone, 
uh it, it's well but it needs to be powered right so it's mm -hmm. still going to have to plug into the phone somehow so now we're going to have separate versions of those for apple phones and everybody else and apple's gonna or make it, it could charge over usb and be independent of the phone though i've seen a number of square readers that do just that so they blue, uh, they're bluetooth connective to the phone but mm -hmm. USB they charge charge, over yeah. usb what do you mean so just well, a standard like a micro usb cable for power yep but where yep. do I get the power from if I if I only have a my wall phone? outlet? From yeah, exactly. Well, if it's so, in the store yeah. or something. Then well, because because yep. I mean, like I see a lot of um of Square users who like are not near outlets. Like if you're at an art fair or if you are uh, getting towed out of a ditch during the winter, like you know, and and the uh, the tow truck guy like charges you money, like. Oh man, yeah. he uses Square. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was Square, but he had a, a credit card reader on his phone. I was like, okay, cool, we're doing this. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I'm I'm calling out Square uh, particularly because I know I've seen that uh, their latest generation of like those EMV chip card readers and Apple Pay readers, oh, right? Yeah. So those actually those are independent of the phone. They they charge just as like a so they have their own battery, battery in them. Charge. They have their own independent battery. Good. Okay. Yeah, good, there we good. go. That's yeah. what I was headed for. Um, mm -hmm. but, but continue. Yeah. But yeah, it's still like um you know it, since we don't have the headphone jack anymore then we're going to need headphones that plug in with lightning and mm -hmm. if other phones go the same route then we're going to have uh headphones that plug in with usb-c and it's like something as universal as headphones i should be able to just take my headphones up to anybody's device and be able to use them like why do why are we about to live in a world where that's not a thing i you know mm -hmm. may, maybe i want brian to listen to something on my phone but like he doesn't want to put my earbuds with my gross earwax on them in his ears. Yeah, I think uh, what we're having, I think it's going to be difficult transitioning. So I think, was it Phil Schiller who said, you know, that lightning is full digital audio, things like that, mm -hmm. which will be more of a, a raw audio from the device. Sure, I guess. sure. But audio is an analog technology. So a headphone is just, you have a connection. It's just playing, it's just taking the frequencies on the cable and just, vibrating them in little speakers right ears. right so audio has been very analog lately and so removing this maybe gives more space in the phone but it's it's removing that it requires the headphones to do a little bit more work yeah and so thus headphones are going to be more expensive and mm -hmm. i think this can be a shift towards higher end maybe because people have to pay more or even worse quality just because right and i think I mean, well, or I mean, Brendan, but Apple you're... will ship this adapter with it as well, which they'll right. it will charge nine dollars, by the way. So this will have its own uh, lightning jack, to its own, three and a half yeah, So it has its own amplifier in there and everything. So I think those are still going to be quite popular. I think it'll be a while before it becomes all lightning. But then again, with USB C and other stuff still having the the jack on there, it's going to be a big fragmentation mm -hmm. and a lot of unrest. I think, especially yeah. I'm curious to see in the coming days and especially once the phone comes out what people have to say about it because i think a lot of tech has heard about it but i don't know if everyone really has right heard about yeah it. and i think ultimately right. the the solution is going to be that we all go wireless um because if we all have bluetooth headphones just kind of as the standard then you'll be able to use those headphones with whatever device you walk up to because what if bluetooth i'm is, yeah what if i'm going somewhere and i want to play some music in an auditorium um, yeah, they would have to have some sort of Bluetooth, There's, you know, like, I think, in there as well. I think the wireless headphones is good for kind of casual use, you know, going on a run, using your headphones, listening to music, going around, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think the wireless Air AirPods, which we'll get to in a second, are good for switching between devices. But Bluetooth is pretty awful for switching devices. You have to pair, you have to forget a device, yeah. go into discovery mode. I think... I, I just know me shifting my I have a pair of Bluetooth headphones and I and it can connect to two because it's using Bluetooth 4.2 so it's to my phone and oh, yeah. watch and I, I can't remember how to pair I've only connected them to those devices and I would maybe like to hook them up to my MacBook or my iPad mm -hmm. but because that's four devices I need to constantly be switching them around mm -hmm. all the time and where I could just take a wire and just unplug and into another in under a second yeah yeah I guess like uh, to, to your auditorium point, though, I think the answer to that is going to be a system like Sonos. Um, we have that at the office. And Chromecast Audio. Chromecast Audio is another another one there. So that that's Airplay, not true. I guess, possibly. So but it's not. Um, but the, the thing about Sonos in particular that's, that's, that's useful is because you do have that kind of access control. 
Uh, right. And you do have that, like that sort of system. I think is probably how that'll handle handle like the auditory cases. I guess. Though you're right that that's, I, that hardware is not as cheap. I, I, I still don't think that's enough though, because you need. Oftentimes for queuing things, if someone's going to hit play, if you have, you know, third of a second delay, it can be very noticeable if you're syncing it up with like an instant lighting queue or something. Oh, sure. Like you need 50 milliseconds can be off enough if you're doing something that is very crucial for yeah. timing. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're going that small, you're probably not going to be using a phone. You're probably going to have it on a computer that will be time synced with other devices and you're going to trigger it all at once. Or right. One mm. trigger device. However, that's true. I think there's going to be a lot of blowback from more professional usage uses of this. Cause I mean, you can only go so long with lightning to 3.5 millimeter without having to charge your phone. And then you'll eventually have to unplug it and plug another. And you know, maybe mm. we'll see adapters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think there will be third party options that will let you charge and listen to audio at the same time. Yeah. Cause I mean the, the lightning to VGA adapters that we have at school have mm. another lightning in yeah. on them. So you can charge while you're projecting Yeah, uh, mm. at the same time. For sure. So and I'm sure that'll be uh, very soon to follow with the uh, lightning to 3.5 millimeter mm-hmm. jack. You know what I'm curious about, actually? How, yeah. e- how easy is it uh, if we're only using digital cords, you know, whether it's lightning or USB type C, how easy is it to split? Because like when I'm on a car trip and I, and I want to watch like Steven Universe with my fiance, um, real world experience here, uh, you know, we just plug in a splitter that just takes, you know, the the analog signal and splits it into two wires. I don't think you can do that with Bluetooth. Maybe you, you could, but right. I don't think things are really designed for that. Well, but so, I mean, like, could you could you easily have a lightning to two lightning splitter I kind of thing? Don't think such a thing exists. I don't. I couldn't see. Maybe, but I don't know. I yep, think I that's, that's 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 not that's a an case issue that they count for. Digital to analog. analog. You can hack so much with analog because mm-hmm. you just, as long as the signal is strong enough, like, you know, you can do whatever you want. And as long as it, you know, there's so much more room for error. And right. I, I remember. It's the I Wild West. Have, yeah. I remember I used to plug my computer into some speakers at home and the cord wasn't long enough. So I had a 3.5 to 3.5 cord plugged into a splitter with just the male end hanging out and just the two female ends were just doubling the length of the cord and it worked just fine. <laughs> yeah. I have kind of a, yeah, a similar setup in my kitchen for having speakers on opposite sides of the room, but getting the same, the same yeah. sound coming out of them. Yeah. Now, I know I've sounded pretty negative about this. I think I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, because they ship an adapter, I think it's a little more okay. Mm-hmm. And especially because they sell new versions for so cheap, I think it can take time, but or it'll, it'll be okay. But I think for a while, it's going to be kind of an iffy spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... When Apple was introducing this, they were saying they had the courage to remove this old obsolete port. So this sparked a little of a Twitter meme trend going on. Meme so, storm. So I'll, I'll just go through and I think th- these will all be in the show notes, but I'm just going to describe them all. So, you know, the caption is courage linking a tweet saying from the company who brought you this dumb shit saying that it's the <laughs> Magic Mouse 2 with the lightning port at the bottom just upside down so you can't use it while you charge. The courage, the Apple Puck Mouse from the early 2000s. Uh, that one already sucked. <laughs> Courage, the uh, cracked uh, Apple TV remote or the Siri remote or another version of the Siri remote with rubber bands at the bottom so you can figure out what's bottom, what's top, so it doesn't slide around and get lost in your couch. Courage, Game Center in iOS 6. That's all I oh, need to man. say. Courage, the Apple Pencil sticking out <laughs> the side of an iPad. So it's this. just kind of showing strange Apple design choices when it comes to and it's so funny that everybody like talks about how great Apple is at design. Yeah. You know, it's, it's quite something. And actually there's one more tweet that I retweeted. I'll try and put it in the show notes. If I remember that was a, a quadrant showing something like, uh, the army on, on the ground coming out of a tank or something, people rock climbing. And there was some other one. And then there was the last one courage. And it was the iPhone seven with a little red X drawn over the headphone port or iPhone <laughs> six. The X over the headphone port. Yeah. So, so but I think, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like the the only thing I'll add to that is just that, um, like th- there's much much ado about it as like a poor design decision because because of all the reasons we discussed, right? But I don't know. As somebody who's used Bluetooth headphones almost exclusively for the past two two and a half years, um, I really think that it's like not seeing the forest through the trees to think that this adapter is like 
that Apple considers the adapter the solution because of the thing we're about to talk about yeah. next. Yeah, and I will say have I've used Bluetooth headphones since April or so, and it's wonderful not having a wire. I absolutely love it, and I think this is a great way of pushing wireless headphones to come out, and I think there's a lot of promise in that, and I'm excited to see what comes out. So what what did they talk about? What did they announce? AirPods, the thing that people have been gossiping about almost for as long as Apple's been, uh, or almost as long as they've been uh, making headphones, is uh, some wireless uh, ear ear earbuds, I guess you could call them. Uh, they look almost exactly like the old uh, original, um, up, up to now, Apple um, earbuds. Oh, yeah. The, but yeah. With EarPod? The, yeah, exactly. The, the <laughs> ones that... The ones that you've seen since the dawn of time. The ones uh, since the iPhone 5 in 2013. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but with the cables literally chopped off the end, uh, which ad- admittedly to me look a little bit strange, uh, but they they clearly uh, did so to keep that kind of iconic aesthetic for, for better or worse. Uh, as you mentioned, Brian, they contain kind of a little bit more of an active uh kind of uh, active hardware than, than you might expect from uh, analog headphones, and that's probably for good reason. Uh, they call out specifically the W1 chip uh, that's also used in several new Beats headphones and earbuds, um, and uh, this kind of interesting protocol that hasn't really been fully described yet that, that seems to rely on Bluetooth, um, but seems to also not quite be Bluetooth alone as is. Um, right, because I'm to help fairly, pair. I'm fairly certain that this can only pair with Apple devices. Yeah, almost certainly. Almost but it certainly. does support things back to the iPhone five. So right. it's, it's. I think it's tied to Bluetooth hardware, but they yeah, might, it's... they might, you know, run custom low level firmware or something that they can do more that they want. And they're on their website on the specs page. I think it is. They mentioned streaming AAC audio, so they might encode something else on the phone to AAC so the headphones only have to play AAC which might be more efficient or less heat I don't know Mm -hmm. absolutely because that you have to worry about codecs when you're dealing with digital sure but I don't know what any of those letters meant advanced Uh, audio codec I think is AAC yeah that that's like um I think that's the de facto compression uh or the the de facto codec used for like songs purchased through iTunes or stream Apple Apple has been using AAC for a long long time a long time and Others don't really use it as much, I would say. Although, actually, I think the M- MP4 containers is are often AAC audio. This is true. This is true. Uh, so what kinds of special things can the, the AirPods do? I remember they said that it will pause automatically when you take it out of your ears, I think, right? Yes. Yes, an, indeed. There's an IR sensor on this, on each one. So it'll detect when it's in and out of your ear. So it won't be playing when it's not in your ear. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if this is, you know, if you have one and you take one out, will it pause it? I don't know. But it might, it'll probably at least stop it in that other AirPod that's oh, not in your yeah. ear. So it saves its battery a little bit. So there's a five-hour battery life, and it comes in a case that has up to 24 hours of battery life. So when it's in its case, it'll be charging these AirPods. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a good mobile place so you don't lose them, but also it will power them. And right. It'll come with a lightning US or lightning USB cord. Looks uh, the case looks a little large to be just like sticking in your pocket, um, the way that I have, you know, my corded earbuds. Um, but I think that's. Uh, that, I think I could manage. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> something that I'm willing to give up is having my f- headphones in my pocket 24 seven as long as I can easily just have them in my backpack next to me. And I think it's really nice that you can mobily charge them without actually having to plug them in somewhere because. Right. My my current Bluetooth headphones charge with micro USB, so I have to kind of be somewhere with a micro USB or carry around a USB charger for mm-hmm. them. Where this, you, you plug them in, and they said if you plug it in for was uh, 15 minutes in there, you get three hours of charge or something ridiculous. Something. Right. That sort of quick charging over, um, that sort of quick contactless charging is really neat, mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. And I mean, uh, chances are it's it's not even that much battery capacity. These are just tiny devices, so they don't use much power. Yeah. You know, like my my Pebble, uh, I plug it in for 15 minutes, and I have like three days of charge. But that's not nice. you know that's not because it's charging super fast. It's just it doesn't need a battery. Yeah. There's only you can when you transfer at X amount of milliamp hours per second or whatever. When your battery is only holding like 200. That's, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, in addition to this, um. 
IR sensor, there's also a voice accelerometer, which will help detect when you're talking to Siri. Well, combine that in your dual beam forming microphones. Yeah. It helps with canceling out background noise when you're talking with Siri or on a phone call or something. Mm-hmm. But you can also tap the head, the, an AirPod to start bring, talking to Siri. Start talking to Siri or maybe start and stop music. I'm not sure. I'm not or sure. Maybe what it's all, all Siri driven. Could be. Yeah. Tap. Hey Siri, pause my song. So, <laughs> how mm, how come these can't just like detect you saying "Hey Siri," and you know? That's true. I don't know. Because like I can understand why they wouldn't want to do that on on an iPhone. I'm still I'm still convinced. Well, there's a switch for that to turn "Hey Siri" on and off. Oh, mm-hmm. permanently? Like yep. all the time? Yep. Oh, okay. Permanently. I think that was new iOS eight, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um. But yeah, like I, I think that the headphones could, could probably handle that. The, yeah. the AirPods. When well, you can have pranksters walking by. Hey Siri, <laughs> hey Siri. I have my sister tries to imitate my voice and tries to activate my phone all the time, but she doesn't sound like me. So <laughs> nice. Yeah, doesn't work. So these will be one hundred and fifty nine dollars and go on sale late October. FYI. Right. Right on. Uh, they also announced. Uh, kind of a companion to this, the original ear pods, but with a lightning connector. Um, that way you can, uh, I believe these will be bundled with iPhone sevens. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that way uh, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, even if you don't have any Bluetooth or lightning uh, headphones right now, you can use those that'll come with your iPhone seven. No need to fret. Uh, additionally, the uh, iPhone 7 will come with a lightning to headphone jack adapter. Uh, and, uh, of course, they'll offer you more if you need more uh, at uh, what some might call a market rate, I guess, sort of. <laughs> um, I feel like at $9 a piece, they're not making much money off of it. This is true. They're mm-hmm. probably just selling it, running up to the nearest dollar and calling good. Mm-hmm. So... This iPhone sounds great, but we haven't even talked about the processor yet, which is, is true. kind right. of what Apple left for last as well. So they have the A10 Fusion. So what this does is it adds two more cores that are lower power. So they're a fifth of the power of the higher speed cores. And these higher cores are uh, much better as it is. And then these low power ones are a fifth of the power. So then you have something light. So if you're just typing an email or writing a text, it'll be low power. But they'll ramp up if you're doing something more like playing a game. Or writing a text with uh, confetti. And I would expect that the two lower powered ones are the cores that it's going to be using if it's doing things when, you know, the screen is off in the background. Oh, yeah, I would I would imagine so. Yeah. So right, I think right. this is what allows for some crazy new battery improvements. So mm-hmm. it was it gets a better battery about two hours more than the 6S, mm-hmm. which is a pretty significant improvement. I think the best that Apple's really had in any other days of the iPhone. So the iPhone 7 is about the same battery life as the iPhone 6S Plus. Mm-hmm. And the 6S Which Plus battery was quite a bit larger than the 6S. Definitely. And it's really interesting to note, too, because that, that sort of um, two high power cores, two lower power cores configuration is actually a thing that's been kind of uh, much discussed uh, among other uh, ARM CPU mm-hmm. shops. Uh, I think they called it their their big little to to say to say words based on how they capitalized yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Big little architecture, um, and it's cool to see that kind of finally come to the mainstream. I don't know of other phones that have that I, sort of layout, but the first I became aware of this kind of thing was when the original Moto X came out, and right. uh, it was what the what did they call it the X eight system uh-huh. or something like that because it had like eight different cores and and four of them like a full half of them were just specialized for one particular thing so like one core was just always uh keeping an eye on the the uh gyroscope and one of them was right. all you know so they were they were super specialized and and didn't do very much uh which meant that they could do those tasks constantly without taking much power kind of thing and so you have right. these four cores as well as apple's now m10 motion coprocessor which mm. handles like gyroscope and accelerometer right. and stuff yeah so they're that yeah they really are you know, they might only say four cores, but it's probably closer to sure. five, six, seven, yeah. eight of just all little tasks. And so that's how you become efficient when you have just small amounts of power for just a very specific thing that isn't mm-hmm. going to need more or less of that. Mm-hmm. Right on. They also uh, are bringing a few new things like LTE Advanced up to 450 megabits per second. The iPhone um, 6S had 300 megabits per second, okay. just for some yep. baseline. 
Uh, they have packed in a few more types of NFC for other areas of the world that um, don't use the same NFC as us, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, Apple Pay will now be available in Japan. Yes. Nice. And uh, they are finally... Uh, the storage options are getting changed a little bit. We can celebrate because 16 gigabytes is no longer available. Woo! Yay. So now the uh. baseline is they're bringing back 32 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So this hasn't been around since the iPhone 5S, I want to say. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the 6, oh, yeah. the 6, they had 16, 64, 128, and the 6S. But now they have 32, 128, and 256. So mm -hmm. that's... 256 gigabytes on an iPhone sounds ridiculous. That's insanity. But I think, you know, with 4K video and apps getting larger and larger these days, it's it, it makes sense. Yeah. And Admittedly, then, my 5S is a 32 gigabyte 5S. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to trading up to the middle of the road 128 gig. The middle uh, of the road 128. <laughs> yeah, See? right, which is which is fully half of what my uh, current desktop computer has yeah. for its yeah, boot same. drive. Same. So, uh, which means that uh, if I went all the way to a 256 gig one, I would literally have a phone that has more storage space <laughs> than my computer. <laughs> but, you know. I, I have the, the iPhone 6, 64 gigabyte, and it's not full yet, but it's, I think it has under 10 gigs free. And that's, I have, I have a bunch of apps, but I use iCloud Photo Library, so there's like 10 gigs of optimized photos that they, they don't delete. I have probably 10 or 12 gigs of music. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just, it just fills up, I guess. I, mm -hmm. It I definitely fills up. I know I've seen some complaints about iCloud Photo Library uh, not really optimizing storage when you're low in space. So right. you, if you have four or five gigs of photos and you want to download an app that you don't have space for, you there's no way to say, okay, delete every photo older than a week. I just mm -hmm. I don't need it right now. There's, there's just no install that. Google Photos and uh, <laughs> give it access to deleting your photos and it'll take care of it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So this... New storage option, I think, is going to be nice. People oh, yeah. will. It's not... been a long time coming. Oh yes, I think a double a thirty-two is really enough. I think for most people. Oh yeah, I have a thirty-two gig phone, and and as a power user, I haven't had a problem. Yeah, I'm, though, I'm though excited I do, for. I do separate out my uh, storage uses a little bit between my phone and my tablet. So my tablet has like all of the games that I've ever bought downloaded on it. Yeah. And well, whenever tablets are better for gaming, I think. Yeah, exactly. And and also like for video watching. So whenever I'm going on a trip and I want to like cache a bunch of uh, YouTube videos offline, the tablet's the one that I use. Yeah. Now my my iPad Mini is only 32 gigabytes, and that has become an issue because with all the apps and music that I have on there, it coasts with about eight to ten gigs free, mm. and that isn't enough for that much of like 1080p videos that I have acquired. Sure. You yeah. know, when every when each episode of 45 minutes long is like almost 2 gigabytes, can't store very many or one movie is 8 to 10 gigabytes, mm -hmm. you can only put one on there. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for probably another year or two down the line when I replace with a newer iPad to get on lighter because iPad sizing is also updated. They have a base of 32 gigabytes. Oh. And they can also go 128 256. So they're kind of unifying that across Nice. Lineups. And nice. I think prices may be changed. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that too much. Oh, yeah, only they, slightly. They also updated the um, iPhone 6 and 6S that they're still selling. Um, so they no longer are selling the 16 gig ones. That Those are 32 gig and, uh, and 128, I think. No. Uh, was it? Ooh, yeah. I think they doubled the, the ones that are available. Okay. Yeah. Let me, I'll load it up right here. If I remember correctly. Um, so the iPhone 7 uh, is coming out on September 16th. Uh, and I think pre-order starting this Friday. Yep. I will be up at 2 a.m. pre-ordering to my heart's content. <laughs> oh man, I don't, I don't really want to be, but I'm going to be. <laughs> Do it. It'll oh, be my, yes. it'll be my, uh, what is it? Fourth time pre-ordering at 2 a.m. See, this is Good this time. is going to be my first time pre-ordering an iPhone at 2 a.m. I think I pre-ordered this iPad at 2 a.m. Um, so when I bought my iPad because... Mini 2, it was strange. They released it overnight. They they didn't. They didn't pre-order. It just was released. And so I bought it at like mm. 7 a.m. that or 6 a.m. that morning. Mm -hmm. um, also coming out is iOS 10. But uh, I think we're going a little long here. So I think we shouldn't talk about that too long. Yeah, you know the features. No Look it up online. Really, yeah, there's, there's not a ton that, was re that really wowed me about iOS 10. It's just really an incremental improvement over iOS 9 mm -hmm. from my perspective. More features, um, new notification stuff, lock screen, mm -hmm. control centers updated. Apple Music is different and better. There's uh, discovered playlists. Apple, the whole music app is redesigned. There's a HomeKit app. 
which they talked about a bit at the keynote, which I don't think is applicable to really most people. Mm -hmm. um, just a note on storage capacities. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are 32 or 128 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. The iPhone SE is 16 or 64 gigabytes. Wait, for real? They kept that 16? Yep. <sighs> it's their cheap phone. Well, <laughs> good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna touch that one. Okay, okay. Um, Anyhow, macOS Sierra. Uh, that's another thing that's coming out. I actually haven't used the beta because I don't. Um, due to kind of uh, freakish circumstances, I do not have a Mac to test it on. Uh, and also, I wasn't super wowed by some of the changes that are coming in place. Uh, the most notable thing, from my perspective, is Apple Pay can be used on the web. Uh, which it's going to be pretty neat. And Siri is coming. going to be Siri, yeah. but I'm not at all excited for that because that icon is ugly. Um, <laughs> True. You don't have to look at it. You just have to listen to it. And do you have to look at it though? Two other you, features. You do. Two other features uh, I think are good are the, uh, the like tap to wake is or no unlock. If you have an Apple Watch within proximity, they oh, yeah. they measure like the distance it takes for a wireless message to go from your watch to your computer. And if it's close enough, it'll unlock your Mac for you. And that, also, that is pretty neat. Shared... Uh, universal clipboard? Yeah, that. Uh, that also sounds horrifyingly bad to me. <laughs> I, I, I do not want to touch that with a 39 and a half foot pole, to quote uh, everyone's favorite uh, Dr. Seuss person. I've heard so it works pretty well. So that means that you copy it. So you copy something on one device and you can paste it on another device? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I actually have had that through Push Bullet in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Until I think what did they make? I think they made it into an, a pro only feature when they when they brought their pricing. I remember in. using some apps on iOS four that did something like that. Where I, I mean, I had to go into an app, but then I ran a little mm -hmm. demon on my Mac. It was more oh. work than I wanted to do, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. From my perspective, I just never want to copy something from from my iPad and have it overwrite something that I do on a Mac because my Mac is usually. Um, when I when I have my Mac running, particularly now that now that my Mac is a desktop Mac and it's a, it's at the office, it's like I, I can't I don't want to have my work clipboard overwritten mm. by any of the other random things I might be That's doing so out, the, outside of work. Which is I guess the answer to that is just don't hook that up. But <laughs> the one yeah. the one situation where I consistently miss it is when I am logging in on like on a computer and it asks me for a two factor authentication code. And I'm mm -hmm. like, man, wouldn't it be nice if I could just like copy that on my phone and then paste it on this other device? Yeah, that's true. Because uh, I'm, get... I'm so lazy that I don't want to type in four, yeah, six could, digits. I could just open my watch, hold it, it copies it, and I just go to my Mac, hit paste. That yeah, would be exactly. That'd be convenient. Yeah. Now, what you got to do there, the answer to that is is not universal copy and paste, but uh, the thing that Authy One Touch does and Duo. That's true. Uh, Duo Two Factor Authentication does, where once you once you've set it up as a, as a, uh, your phone as a second factor device, all you have to do is approve the request, and then you're done. Never have to copy anything. Oh, sure. So you just like hit yes from a notification that pops up on mm -hmm. your phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That yeah, that's true. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Though, Anyhow, I, yeah. <laughs> so they they wrapped up the event with a neat performance by a personal favorite artist of mine, Sia. Um, I had and never I heard, heard of it. Was her. pretty rad. Sia, like you've never wanted to swing. From a chandelier, a chandelier, that, that's you. She had the music you know, that videos one. that had uh, the, the dancer, Maddie Ziegler, who was on some dance show, yeah. I guess. She's yeah. done, She's kind of like been the the front person of Sia, I think, in the music videos at least. So there's that one with her and, uh, oh my gosh, why is that blank on me? What's his name? The actor who did just do it. Shia LaBeouf. Her and, oh, man. and Maddie were in, a, were in a music video and... Yeah, I don't know. I I came to know Sia from the music videos, and then I started really recognizing the songs pretty soon after I saw the music videos. Yeah, so Sia's, I Sia's I quite pretty, enjoyed that performance. Yeah, the, the performance I turned it off when it started. Great. I was like, I'm a lot done. of the tech people on my Twitter were like, "What the heck is this?" And I was like, what? "Oh, it's good." Like, I don't know. I really liked it. I have I have two songs by Sia on on my Apple Music, and I have like four of her albums on Spotify. <laughs> In <laughs> my defense, I really good. really needed to pee, so <laughs> I had too. to go. That's fair. Yeah. So that pretty much does it. Mm -hmm. If you have any comments or questions about this event, you can contact us on Twitter. Yep. Or if you uh, want to see the show notes, uh, go to the nexus.tv slash NS47. Um, and you can you could also hit the contact button there that sends us an email. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, Twitter will get back to you a lot faster. Twitter is definitely better. So I'm Ian R. Buck on Twitter. I'm Brandon underscore MN. And I'm underscore Brian Mitchell underscore. And that is Brian with an underscore B R I A N M I T C H E L L underscore. Screw Brian to the Y. I is the way to go. <laughs> like Luke um, Brian? Is that, is that your least favorite Brian? Might be. I don't know. But no? actually, like, okay. O'Brien, <laughs> the last name, has an E. What is that? Oh, sure, uh, sure. Conan. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Have a good one. Catch you on the flip side. Until the next Apple event.